Hello there. So today I'm going to explain my process from start to finish. I'm going to be explaining each step as I go, as well as breaking down my different layer management, as well as my different blend modes I use. Nice. References is usually the first step since it shows you how to draw something if you don't know how, and it also shows you how other artists may paint something if you want to incorporate it into your work. Rough work is generally one of the most important steps for me since it focuses less on the details and more on the construction of everything. By this I mean I'm focusing more on the perspective, proportion as well as form for different characters and background elements. I generally do this by using a combination of 3D volumes and 2D shapes. If you're drawing anything in perspective it's always important to remember your guidelines and different vanishing points. If you're having troubles with the construction, I recommend practicing different 3D volumes in perspective so you can get used to it. Once you have the feel for different 3D volumes in perspective, it's easier to construct different characters as well as backgrounds from the individual pieces. Okay, so now with construction out of the way, I generally move on to a more refined sketch of the character and background elements. This is where I start adding basic features to the characters and backgrounds. I still ignore most details since I don't want to get caught up yet. I don't have much to say about this step since it's basically just sketching over your base construction. Once I have the character sketch, I generally do a more refined sketch over it where I start adding details. The step can also be considered a line art layer if you work accurately, which I don't. I do sometimes do line art again over this layer just to refine everything a little bit more. If your line art or refined sketch is looking a bit too messy for your liking, you can always apply a little bit of Gaussian blur. This will take a bit of the sketchiness away from it, however this is not going to clean up chicken scratches completely. Once I'm happy with my refined sketch or line art, I'll move on to create a silhouette of the character. I do this quickly by using the contiguous selection tool on the line art layer. Just make sure your refined sketch layer or your line art layer has no big gaps in between the individual lines. This is going to cause the selection to start selecting inside the character. I do this on the line art layer by selecting the outside, then I invert the selection. By doing this you'll be left with the inside selection of the line art layer. I find this method easier and faster than the magnetic or lasso tool. This method isn't perfect so you may have to do a bit of cleanup around the edges. In most cases the base or the silhouette is usually the skin color so I don't have to paint it again later. Once I have this base layer, I use clipping masks and paint individual flat color layers above it on different elements. I do this so I don't have to worry about different colors overlapping. Once I have all the different flat colors painted, I merge everything down to the base layer. By merging all the layers down, I end up with one base layer instead of having a base layer and flat colors above it. When I start painting in shadows and lighting, I generally start with shadows and then move on to the lighting. For the colors or the feel of it, it's generally opposites. By this I mean if it's a cooler shadow, I'll have a warmer light source and vice versa. When painting shadows, I generally use multiply layers. I split them into two different layers being the main shadow as well as the darker areas or ambient occlusion. I split the two layers since it's easier for me to adjust them individually by opacity and color. To me this is easier than using a curve tool or a filter tool that they give you on the app. Another reason why I use two different multiply layers is because the second multiply layer will always end up darker. This is because of the way the blend mode works. It will multiply the base layer with the first multiply layer then the second multiply layer. Alright, that's gotta be true, right? Alright, let's go with that one. I feel like it's important to say that I don't always do the ambient occlusion right after the base shadows. Sometimes I do the lighting first so I can get a better sense of the shadows and change things as I go. For lighting I generally use the overlay blend mode or screen blend mode. These two blend modes will always increase the lightness of your colors, even if you placed above multiply layers. It's also important to note that the overlay layer doesn't exclusively work as a lighting layer. Below 50% it darkens things and above 50% it lightens things. Whereas the screen mode will always work as a lighting layer in the sense that it always lightens your colors. When using a darker color, it tends to have little to no effect on the piece overall. Also, a very big difference in the two layers that's important to note is that the screen layer tends to use less saturated colors and the overlay layer retains more of its colors. By this I mean the screen layer tends to make colors more towards the whiter side and the overlay layer has an option of going more towards the saturation side. Even though there's differences, the overlay layer can still be used to create the same effect as a screen layer, but a screen layer can't be used to create the same effect an overlay layer could. So ultimately it's up to you what you decide to use according to your artwork. The first lighting layer is basically the direct light or whatever the original light source is. 
I ignore all the reflected light and all the bounce and ambient light at this point. The second lighting layer is where I do the highlight and I tend to use an addition layer for this. Other times I use color dodge or linear dodge. I generally use the same color as the lighting layer. As I said before, it's easier to adjust if the layers are split. This especially applies to highlights for me since it can make a big difference. The final layer I usually use is a soft light layer. I use this layer to paint the reflective light or bounce light depending on the situation. This also applies to the ambient light which may appear for your characters or background elements. At this point you have two different options. You can either keep each individual layer separate or you can merge everything together into one individual layer like I do. I prefer using one layer since it's easier to liquefy. This is because I use a brush to liquefy or shrink and enlarge instead of using the transform tool. If you leave everything on separate layers you'll have to use the transform tool and use the different options available. Use the transform tool on the entire group so it can affect every single layer within. If you're going to merge everything into one individual layer, merge the entire group into one. This will retain all your blend modes and will keep everything intact. If you merge every single layer individually, you're going to lose your blend mode. Now that everything's on one layer, I regroup that layer and paint above it. I don't always use clipping masks depending on what I'm doing or fixing up. At this point I'm just basically using different brushes and using the color picker since all my colors are available. At this point your value should also be correct or roughly correct since you've been using the blend modes and it does most of the work for you. This is the stage where I basically do all my refining. I do this method for the character as well as the different background elements depending on what I'm painting. I don't do all the refinements at once. By this I mean I create backups as I go by merging the groups that I've been painting in. Once I have that group merged, I put that entire layer back into a group and paint above it again. I basically repeat this process until I'm happy with the final result. Once I'm happy with all the refinements I've done, I'll move on to doing the final touches. In this stage, I'm basically just adding different hair strands as well as saturation between the lighting and shadow areas on the skin and other areas that may apply. I put the saturation layer here so it's easier to control. This is so I don't have to work with it throughout the refinement process and on the different layers. I just use a saturation blend mode to do this. I use a red color on the skin to saturate in between the lights and shadows. Generally speaking on the different materials as well as the different elements on characters that aren't the skin, I use the light source color to saturate. It's also important not to oversaturate areas that you don't want to draw too much attention to. At this point you should have a finished piece basically. If not, I recommend using the different curves and different tools that you have available to you. The color balance tool is a good way to adjust your shadows, midtones and highlights by minor different color variations. The levels tool is more used to adjust your values and make them darker or lighter accordingly. These are the two main tools I use. The curves tool is also another way to do minor adjustments, although I don't use it. Another way you can make things stand out is by using color dodge. Just add a layer above everything and lightly brush in the areas that you want to stand out and you want to bring attention to. Also don't be afraid to change the opacity if you feel the need. I generally use a very low opacity for this. Obviously don't go overboard because it can ruin the entire piece. Another way to make things stand out or bring focus to an area is to caution blur your character or background. After that you erase the areas that you want to be in focus. As a final step just to unify everything I take a very low opacity layer on multiply. I take that layer and fill it with a blue layer or whatever color the background or lighting source is. Generally speaking it's mostly a light blue layer. And after a million years you finally finish with the process. So to sum it up, I start with construction and I move on to my refined sketch. From there I do my line art if I'm doing it. Then I do my base colors and I start building up the shadows and different lighting from there. I break down the layers into two shadow layers, two lighting layers and an ambient or bounce light layer. From there it's basically just painting as you go and adding the final touches. Take care now, bye bye then.